Okay, everyone wants to know about my new relationship. So the doctors wanted my mom to abort me. Whole other tea that I just don't want to get into. Ooh, how do you know when a boy is playing with your emotions? Ah! Hello, everybody. Oh my gosh. You guys, hello. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my new home. Oh my gosh. I could literally cry because I'm so excited about this. Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Janine. I have been off of YouTube for over a month because I took a little break because I had to move and I was traveling and I was trying to set up my new spot and there's construction downstairs so if you hear noises that's why. But uh, yeah, so hello, I'm so sorry I took a break but I think it was needed for me to kind of really just get myself settled into my new home. And if you're not watching my moving vlogs, if you don't know where I am, what the heck is going on, then you need to check out my vlog channel, it's Janine TV. I have all my moving vlogs there. Basically, I moved into my own little house, my own little home. It's not legit a house. Like, you think I can pay for that in California? No. I'd rather buy a house in Texas. Anyway, so that's the sit, you guys. Um, I'm in a new little spot, and I love it. I'm so excited. I will definitely do a whole tour once I'm fully settled, once everything is decorated, because um, I don't really still know what I'm doing. Like, there's random pieces of furniture everywhere, and I'm like, does this look good there? Does it not? I don't know. So, there's still much to be done, you guys. So, if you want to see kind of like the progress, everything of what I'm doing, then Janine TV, my vlog channel, is your place to go. But yeah, I haven't sat down and just chit chat with you guys and updated you on what the heck has been going on because of just, like I said, all those reasons why. So I asked you guys on my Instagram, just send me things you want me to talk about, questions, everything like that. So if you guys want to be, you know, participating in the next one of these, then follow me on Instagram. It's Janine Amapola. So let's go ahead and do this. So, all right. Do I like living alone? This is definitely something that people keep asking me. Um, I will say that it is not as, it's not easy. I mean, the first time I lived alone was college, it was my sophomore year, no, senior year of college. I did it for a semester and I absolutely hated it and it made me become more dependent on my boyfriend at the time and I don't like that that's not okay to do and like, now this time I'm completely changing my thinking of living alone. I'm looking at it this time as, okay, Janine, this is your time to be okay with being alone and to be, can you not hammer please? Thank you. Um, and so I'm looking at now as a way of like, this is your time to grow. And before I get married, who knows when that's gonna happen, you know, only God knows if it's even this person or whoever it may be. I'm hoping it is this person, but you know what I mean? I want to make sure that I'm okay with being alone in myself and who I am before I take that step and that journey down towards marriage. Um, so I'm having to, you know, learn to cook more and clean more and be okay with being alone and resting fully on the Lord when I do feel lonely. And then also it's teaching me to just reach out to people more. That is definitely one of the biggest things I suck at is initiating friendships more and calling people up, texting people, hey, how are you doing? It's making me have to learn to do that more, which I'm actually so thankful for because that's an area where I've needed to grow for a long time. So that's where it's good. Um, it definitely can be a little bit lonely. I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't think anybody who says that they live alone wouldn't say like it gets lonely because it definitely does. I definitely want to get a cat, but maybe not right now. So far, I'm liking it, but I'm sure there will be times where I'm like, oh, I don't like this. But so far, you guys, it's nice. I can do literally whatever I want, whenever I want. So it's kind of nice. People want to know about my views on intimacy within dating. So I'm assuming that regards, you know, uh, sex and hooking up and you know all of that stuff so let me just get right into this and what my thoughts are on all of that so I am NOT a virgin if you did not know that hello my name's Janine I'm not a virgin I'm not Colt from The Bachelor I'm not a virgin even though I don't think he's really a virgin but that's whole other tea that I just don't want to get into but no I am NOT a virgin I lost my virginity um, when I was 22 to my second boyfriend it's definitely one of my biggest biggest regrets in my life um, but it is something that I have forgiven myself of and it's not something that I hold myself like I hold over my own head and I don't think anybody else should I don't think it should be something that's so taboo to talk about but I do think that it is something that still should be cherished and should be looked at as valuable I think sex is a very valuable thing that should be safe for the confines of marriage I think it protects your heart it protects your relationship 
Um, sex can, can blur lines. It can confuse you. It can keep you in relationships longer than it needs to, than it, yeah, than it should. And so with my current relationship, if you guys didn't know, I'm in a relationship right now. And that's something I'll get into later. But I think no sex before marriage, no even hooking up before marriage, no sleeping in the same bed before marriage. Now, I know you think that's so legalistic and religious and you are a typical crazy Christian, but I think those are all things that should be safe for marriage and things that are just meant to be reserved for the marriage bed. And I think they're, they're, those are things that are exciting to look forward to when you get married. So will I say that I've been perfect at that? No. Like my boyfriend and I, we have definitely slept in the same bed because of like traveling and sometimes you just get tired and you end up sleeping in the same bed, but that's definitely not something that I want to be a continual thing in my relationship because I do want to just be as careful as possible. If you continually put yourself in a position to where you're gonna slip, you're gonna slip. It's like putting an alcoholic near alcohol and expecting them to always have that self-control. If you continually keep putting someone in that position where there's an area of doubt, I mean an area of temptation or struggle, eventually you're gonna slip. Like we're not invincible. Like we can't just be like, oh no, in this area I'm gonna be invincible. I'm not gonna um, get tempted like you will. So you have to be careful in what situations you're putting yourself in. And so we're just gonna be open and honest here. And like that's my thoughts and all that. So I do think that God values saving sex before marriage and um, just I think personally in my own life now that I'm on the other side of the fence of have having sex um, I just know that that was so it was it just really jacked me up so I just know like it is the best thing for me to wait until marriage again so I want to just honor the Lord in my relationship and do that okay wow that was really really long but you guys wanted my thoughts on that so that is those are my thoughts on that but someone wants to know am I still keeping up with the porch and if you guys don't know what the porch is the Porch is a uh, ministry back in Dallas. That's where I used to go every Tuesday. It seriously, can, I cannot say without, like without a doubt, changed my life. And I truly think because of this ministry, it is the reason why I am in the relationship now because I waited and held out for somebody who fit all the criteria that the Lord had for me and that I wanted for myself. And the podcast taught me really, and the sermon and ministry taught me really what to look for in a godly man and in a godly relationship and what to like save yourself for. And that is exactly what I did. And I learned that from this ministry. And I truly think because of that, I have found someone so perfect and fitting in that criteria. So I do keep up with it. I was literally just listening to it this morning. If you guys want more information on it, I will have it linked down below where you guys can check out all the podcasts. Um, it's a Christian ministry. So if that's not your type, obviously I'm not going to shove it down your throat, but I definitely encourage you just to at least listen to one and just get your, and, and think about it and what they're saying in those podcasts. So yeah. All right, so someone said, what church do you go to? And I go to a vintage church, Santa Monica. I love this church. It's really cool. It's a cool mixture of um, modern as, as well as traditional. It's spirit-filled, but also very biblically based. So if you guys want to check out a church in LA, that's where I will be. I'm a greeter at the door, so you can probably meet me. I can shake your hand. I can say, yo, what's up? Okay, I'm so sorry. I should not have dabbed on you. But yeah, check out the church. It's awesome. Ooh, how do you know when a boy is playing with your emotions? I think if you're even kind of like questioning that, then he's playing with your emotions. You know what I mean? I am a full, firm believer and like if a guy wants to be with you, then he wants to be with you and he's not going to play games. He's not going to leave you questioning, wondering what are his intentions? What does he want with me? Like I'm a firm believer. Like if he wants to date you, then girl, he wants to date you. And so when my boyfriend and I started talking and, and you know, getting into dating, he told me straight up, Janine, I want to date you and I don't want to play games. Like I am looking to date somebody and with the intentions of this leading towards marriage. And I was like, that's exactly what I want. So like, girl, don't mess around with the little petty boys who are just like, oh, they just want to hook up or they just want to date. There's no intention of marriage or whatever. Like I don't even mess with that. So if you even think he's messing with you, then like he probably is. Do you feel bored and lonely in LA even though you're surrounded by your friends and don't you miss your family? Absolutely, yes, I do. I miss my family all the freaking time. Like I could get emotional about that, but I'm so thankful. Honestly, I'm probably emotional because I'm on my period. <laughs> Let's be honest. But um, I'm going back to Dallas this weekend to visit my sister for her birthday. Oh, hold on. Hello? Hello, hi, oh, Yes, that's me. I got mail! I think you guys, I think I know what this is. I'm so stoked. Yay! It's my new vlog camera. So I, it's a Canon uh, G7X and mine broke like just, it was done ski. So I needed to get a new one. Yay! Oh my gosh. So I swear like every YouTuber uses this camera, but it really is good. Even though the focusing is not like the most amazing, but all right. Sorry. That's besides the point. Yay. New vlog camera. Stoked about that. 
Oh, I was just saying, yeah, I'm going to visit my family this weekend. Um, but I definitely miss my family a lot because I don't have any out here. And even though, like, I have really, really great people out here, like, no one replaces your friends back at home and no one replaces your family. So, yeah, that's why I text those people a lot and want them to come visit me. Okay, so do I ever miss my ex? And why did I miss all the signs? No judgment. So... A lot of people want to know about my old relationship and I it's hard for me to talk about because it really was such a painful time in my life and I hate that I like bring this up a lot in my Q&As and it's not that I'm like reliving the past or that I like miss that old relationship because I don't at all but people still want to know and I feel like I grew so much from that relationship and I learned a lot basically like I was in a really toxic relationship there at the end of it Ugh, even just like pains me to talk about but no, I do not miss my old relationship. Honestly, here's the issue. When you're in a toxic relationship, you you are aware of the signs, but you're just too scared to leave it. You're too scared because you're afraid of what's going to happen. You're afraid of what they're going to do when they manipulate you. And I knew there was bad signs and I should have listened to myself. And I, I pushed those feelings away because I was so scared. And I was like, I gave this guy my virginity. Like, should I just stay with him? Like, out of a, it was a lot of things out of fear, which were just so unhealthy. So please... Do not do that. If you sense that this person is either leading you away from who you truly are or it's making you a worse person or they're manipulating you or you don't feel good in this relationship or you don't feel confident or you are just questioning the relationship and have any doubts and like, girl, you need to get out of that. And I, I honestly like there were some signs in the beginning that were not a, I was not aware of when we first started dating because they came to fruition later in the relationship. It, it was that um, effect of like, Oh, I'm already too deep into this relationship, so let me just follow through and see what happens. Because as girls, we want to think we can change somebody. We want to think that we can be the person that like changes them and that we that we want to see the benefit of the doubt of that person, but it's not, it's not true. It doesn't work like that. So I knew there were signs, but I was just stupid and really naive in that relationship at the end of there, at the end of it, and I should have left forever ago, and I was just too scared. I was too deep into it, and that's why I didn't. So please do yourself a favor. If you're in a toxic relationship and you know it, girl, please get out of it because the sooner you get out of it the better and you can start growing and healing um quicker so yeah do i want to have my own clothing brand or clothing line one day and yes i do that's definitely something i want to do this year with merch and just products like that's 100 something i want to do and something else that i really really love about it, i don't want to say what it is but something that i really really love and drink every single day i want to do something with that so yeah okay everyone wants to know about my new relationship so this is something that I want to talk about, but I also am just very like weary of because I know how dating goes on YouTube and it's kind of a scary thing to open up about and I want to just protect my relationship as much as I can and I don't want to just be that girl who dates somebody and just immediately is like boyfriend tag and boyfriend does this and boyfriend does that. Like I just don't want to do that because again, I've learned from my past just to really protect my relationship and I truly really just love this relationship and I want to just be careful of that and he's not somebody who's like oh I want followers and I want you to shout me out like he's not somebody like that and I just want to protect my relationship and I really just love where we are right now and it is, it is a new relationship but I just want to protect it and um, not make you guys think that I'm only dating him for views or for clickbait or for likes on Instagram that is not what I want to do so that's why I'm just you get what I mean I just want to be really really careful but I do really just love I love who he is and everything he stands for. He loves Jesus. He's from Alabama. He's a surfer. He lives in San Diego. His name's Devin. He's an awesome person. And yeah. Um, have I ever had an eating disorder? And no, maybe not that even that I was even aware of. Like I never was like bulimic or anorexic or anything of that sort. I do think that there are, you know, unhealthy eating habits like over binging or maybe kind of like not eating because you think you don't deserve it. Maybe little things like that, but it was never severe enough where I was like, I need help, or it was never severe enough where people notice and noticeably were like, what is wrong with you or something's wrong with you. So no, I don't think I've ever had like a legit eating disorder, but I do think along my fitness journey, there were unhealthy thinking patterns along with food. Um, okay. My trash can just opened by itself. I didn't say open. My trash can's um, voice activated, but it'll sometimes randomly open by itself. And my TV, my TV's on again. Sometimes my TV will turn on by itself, which it's not supposed to do. So I really think that it's haunted, but not in Jesus' name. It's not haunted. No, no, no. No demons in my house. Um, okay, would you move anywhere else besides California? And yeah, I think I would. I don't foresee myself living in California forever. I really love this place. and I love all the opportunities and possibilities that it provides me. But I miss Texas a lot. And I mean, I also would be down to try somewhere else. Um, but I don't foresee myself living here forever. I just, 
I can't. I genuinely can't. But I do love this state. Believe me. Someone said thoughts on abortion. So this is, it's really scary to get into political things on YouTube because you kind of can dig yourself a hole and people can use it against you down, down the road. And it's just, it's kind of a scary thing to open up about. But I am pro-life. Um, I do think, you know, like, if you want to choose to abort your baby, then that's your decision. But I do think, and I don't think that's a decision that will just go away. I mean, I've seen so many stories and testimonies and videos of women sharing how they had an abortion and they can't sleep at night or they they regret it or they've seen the consequences of it but i just think it naturally comes with a little bit of a burden and it'll always be on your mind and maybe that's different maybe if you have had an abortion that's different maybe you don't regret it i don't know everyone's story i try to be more open-minded to people and what they want to do but i do i am pro life and i am pro you know TV, can you stop turning on by yourself? I'm for babies. I'm for people not aborting a baby that's nine months and it's fully developed and it has feelings and it, it can feel pain. And But the thing is, again, it's like, that's your choice. If you decide to abort a baby, then like you're the, you're gonna be the one who has to deal with that, whether that's positive or negative. You're gonna be the one who has to deal with that, not me. But I, I would only hope that people would at least consider other options um, before doing that and I do know that there are certain situations where it's necessary if the baby is already not going to be developed or the baby might be dying or the that baby might be causing the mom to die I don't know there's certain situations this is a really iffy topic but I am a firm believer in just praying because you guys get this the doctors wanted my mom to abort me my umbilical cord was wrapped around my neck and they said she's not gonna make it or she's gonna be down syndrome which there's nothing wrong with down syndrome babies and they just said, like, she's not going to be a healthy baby. It would be best if you aborted this baby. And my mom and my dad prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And they went back to the doctor. The doctor was like, holy crap. Probably didn't literally say that. But he said, whoa, the umbilical cord is not wrapped around her head anymore. She's going to be okay. Like, because I wasn't getting oxygen to my freaking brain. And that's just the power of prayer. And that's why I just think, like, pro-life. Because my mom and my dad were the, were the ones who just who chose to stick it out and to trust God and to pray because if they had chosen just to just abort me because I was going to be sick or I was going to be, you know, underdeveloped or whatever, then like I wouldn't be here, you guys. Like I would not be here. So I'm so thankful that my parents chose to have me. Thank you, mom and dad for having me, which I'm just I'm so thankful for. So can you just imagine if my parents did choose to do what the doctor said? So that's kind of my thoughts on that. A lot of people have just been asking me, why did I move out? And I have talked about this numerous times, but I will answer it one more time. I chose to move out because the second I moved in to my old house in LA, I wasn't happy. And I think my followers knew that, my roommates knew that. And even though I like stuck it out because I know I sound so petty being like, oh my God, I stuck it out. But it, for my career, having natural lighting, having a bright open space, a place that I can film whenever, wherever, and just having an assistant over a videographer is so important to me for my growth and my success. On YouTube and the second I moved in I just knew that something felt wrong when I moved in I was like this is not what I wanted this is not what I expected um, I didn't enjoy living in the basement I didn't enjoy not having natural lighting there were definitely obstacles I had to like overcome in that room and even though I loved living with Morgan and Adrian I loved being around all my neighbors and being with other girls like I still miss that to this day because I love being in community I love being with other girls and I love just walking upstairs and be like hey guys what's up let's watch The Bachelor or whatever um, that's something I'm definitely gonna miss, but just already like living alone. I just love how I can literally just plant my lights on, plant my camera down and film right here, right now. And I don't have to text anybody being like, hey guys, is it okay if I use the living room or like just get clearance to anybody? Cause like when you live with YouTubers and I live with, literally live with bloggers for the past three years. So it's, it's always had to be that way. So it's so nice kind of having just like the freedom to do whatever I want. So it really was just for my own happiness. I love my roommates. It has nothing to do with them. It was seriously just because of my job and what I needed for me and my happiness. And that's why. So I just wanted more space. I wanted, you know, more modern, more brighter. And this is a perfect little spot for me. So that is exactly why I moved out. A lot of people were asking me about my lashes and what I'm using to grow my lashes and my mascara. So I use Redmond and Fields Eyelash Serum. It can be a bit, a bit expensive. You have to get it like through their website, through one of their like authorized sellers. I don't know. I got it from a friend who works for them. And then my mascara I use is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. All right, I'm going to answer one last question. 
do you ever get concerned about what your future on YouTube may look like? And yeah, I think that it's natural for every YouTuber to feel that way. But at the end of the day, like, I just have faith, like, that God will take care of me. And I know I keep talking about God, 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 God. But, like, really just that, for me, that's where all my peace comes from. So if YouTube were to fail, fail one day or I just stopped or I don't even know what the case may be. I would be okay with pursuing other revenues if I had to, even though I don't want to, because I love YouTube. I love everything. I just, this has been my baby since I was 16. But ultimately, I think every YouTuber is a little bit scared because it's so shaky and rocky and up and down, and we don't know really what to expect and what they're going to do. I, yeah, I do get a little bit nervous about it, but just to be honest, like, I'm just, if that's what God wants for me to do, if he wants me to go pursue something else, then that's what I'll have to do. But hopefully, I will still have you amazing people, like, on my Instagram or another platform or something, because I never want to lose you guys and my friendship with you guys. So, yeah. Okay, so that is my video on my life and Q&A and just updated situation on everything. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed just sitting down with me in my new little home. I'm really thankful for this little spot. Um, and I will hopefully be cranking out some more content soon with my videographer. I want to do some really cool new ideas, things that aren't just me sitting in my home, like me getting out of my home and trying new things. So that will be exciting. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. If you want to join the next Q&A, then follow my Instagram. It's Janina Mapola. I interact with you guys there all the time. So I love you guys. I will see you very, very soon. Peace out, Girl Scout. Bye, guys.